Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another top video. We know how much you guys loved our last top video and how you've been recommending all these other industries we could do it on. So buckle up because here it is. The top three retirement stocks listed on the New Zealand exchange. These three stocks are Ryman Healthcare, which is only listed on the New Zealand exchange, Somerset and MetLife Care, which are listed on both New Zealand and Australian exchange. Make sure to smash that like button. And if you're new to our channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But for now, let's jump right into it. Let's begin with their business model and how they generate revenue. Some of you may think it's as simple as the elderly paying for a home and then that's it. Well, there's a bit more to that and it's very important to understand. Starting with the question, do they actually purchase the home as we do with regular homes? Well, no. The way it works is the purchaser of the home in the retirement village purchases the license to occupy the home. This is called the occupation right agreement. So essentially, they do not own the property but they just buy the right to live there. Usually, most villagers expect a full payment of this license up front, or in some cases, they may allow you to pay a deposit to secure a spot. Full payment is still required afterwards. This amount, which the license was bought for, is refunded to the purchaser or to the next of kin if they decide to leave or unfortunately pass away. Now, before refunding this amount, the village subtracts something called the deferred management fee which is a percentage-based fee taken out from the original buy amount on a yearly basis, but is only subtracted upon leaving. This fee is used to help in the marketing and other expenses that may be required in order to resell the license to someone else. These fees are capped at a certain percentage too. Let's take a look at a quick example. The deferred management fee for this example is capped at 25%, where 5% is charged each year after the entry fee of 5%. On a 400K license payment, after four years, if the purchaser decides to leave, they will be refunded 300k. If they decide to leave after three years, they will be refunded 320k. And if they continue to stay past four years, they will not be charged additional fees as it is capped at 25%. Now, the ideal situation for the company, as sad as it may sound, is for the purchaser to leave after four years as the company can maximize the fee and get someone new in to restart the cycle. This is their main source of revenue. Additionally, the village will charge weekly fees which will help pay for the maintenance and employee wages. On top of that, the village will charge more if personal requests are made. Now you may be wondering, what about the capital gains on the property? What if the value of the home increases when someone is staying in there? Well, the village will not pass on any capital gains to the purchaser, only the original amount that was agreed upon when the license payment was made, minus the deferred management fee only that will be refunded to the purchaser or their next of kin. Even if the village sells the license to the next person for a higher amount, in the cases where the property has increased in value, the previous purchaser will reap no benefit. So there are four things that make up a retirement village's revenue. The deferred management fee, weekly fees, personal request fees, and potential capital gains on the property. Now that we've hopefully understood their business model, let's compare a few stats, which may seem basic, but can tell you a lot when linked together with one another. Starting with the occupancy of each company's properties, the industry average is 89%. So let's see how each company is doing against the standard. As you can see, all three companies are destroying the industry average as they're all in the high 90s. A key thing to note, or something we found that was odd with Ryman Healthcare's occupancy rate, which is from the 2019 report, was that there was no mention of this key stat in their 2020 report. This was especially odd considering in the 2019 report, they mentioned it numerous times and you can go as far as saying they were even boasting about it and how they were so proud of the occupancy. So for them to leave this key stat out in their 2020 report seemed very strange and may indicate something. Moving forward, each company's deferred management fee. So the range of these fees across the companies is capped between 20 to 30%, but it's important to note the length of the plan and how much the company charges per year. As harsh as it may sound, and our apologies if it may offend anyone, but the ideal situation from a company's perspective is for the tenants to leave or pass away after their plan is over, as the company can maximize the fee. Because the fees are capped, so after a certain point, they will not be able to charge the tenant. This brings us to our last step, the minimum age requirement. This is important because they do not want to let people in that are likely to live a longer life. Again, our apologies, but from a company's point of view, they want to make sure that the minimum age requirement is high, as it's likely that the tenants will leave after a few years. So as you can see, all three companies have a high minimum age requirement to get in. Now, what do all these stats tell us? From a customer's point of view, 
these numbers show that Ryman Healthcare would be the attractive option because its fees are capped at 20% and it is a five year plan at 4% a year. So if the customer does leave early, they or their next of kin will get a larger payout. From an investor's point of view, MetLife Care looks good. If we are only basing it on these numbers, as they are capped at a higher percentage of 30% and charge a massive 10% a year. This is good because logically thinking, it means MetLife Care are likely to reach their deferred management fee cap of 30% as their plan is only three years. Whereas Somerset and Ryman have a longer plan so there's more likelihood of them not reaching their cap. Even though MetLife Care is not the ideal choice from a customer point of view due to its fees, it does surprisingly have a high occupancy rate, which is a good sign. Customers are still choosing them even though their price is high. However, as an investor, you should always look deeper and not just base it on the theories, even though they may seem logical. You should always look to find actual facts that support your theory. Let's take a look at some facts and let's see if they align with the theory. Now that we know a little bit about these companies, let's look into their numbers. Retirement village business may sound boring and old school, but this doesn't mean there's no money to be made here. In fact, the companies in this industry have been growing quite well for many years. If we look at the revenues of the three companies in the last four years, Ryman Healthcare's revenue has gone up from 288 million to 422 million, Somerset 85 million to 154 million, and MetLife Care 106 million to 131 million. So from this, we can clearly see that MetLife Care has been growing the slowest at an average of 7.5% a year, while Somerset grew at the fastest at 21% a year, and Ryman Healthcare in the middle grew at 13%. Although the revenues of these companies have been growing well, their net profit after tax numbers shows an opposite trend. As you can see from these graphs, all three companies' net profit has been decreasing in the recent years. The reason for this is because retirement villages are essentially a real estate business. So when their properties increases in value, it gets added as an income even if they haven't actually sold anything. So to avoid this problem, it's better to track their performance by looking at their underlying profit. The underlying profit values are determined by excluding deferred taxation, taxation expenses, and unrealized movement on investment properties because these items do not reflect the trading performance of these companies. So if we exclude those factors, we can clearly see a constant growth trend but with a slowdown. If you are an investor looking for dividends, these numbers are especially important as they are used as a benchmark to determine how much payout they will give to their shareholders. For Ryman Healthcare, their policy is to pay out 50% of their underlying profit, while Somerset's policy is to pay out 30 to 50%. With the current price for these companies, the dividend yield is only 1.2% for all three. But just like their underlying profit, they are growing every year. Over four years, Ryman Healthcare increased their dividends by 36%, Somerset 83% and MetLife Care by 91% which is a phenomenal growth. But one thing to note here is that these dividends do not come with any imputation credits so you have to pay full taxes on them when you receive it. This is because these companies are technically not trading in properties. They develop and hold their properties for a significant period of time, therefore pay no tax on the capital gains. Instead, investors have to pay for it when it comes out as dividends. So it's clear that the retirement village industry as a whole has been performing well for many consecutive years. But how does the future of this industry look now? New Zealand's population is aging, and the total number of people aged 75 and over is forecasted to be more than triple in the next 50 years according to Statistics New Zealand. And the growth rate of this population is predicted to increase until the year 2038. So the demand for this type of service doesn't seem like it will decrease anytime soon and still have many years to continue growing at a fast pace. To accommodate for this trend, all three companies already have many villages under construction and new ones already planned out. Like these for Ryman Healthcare, these for Somerset, and these for MetLife Care. However, one big risk for these companies is that their profitability relies heavily on capital gain. In the last decade, New Zealand housing market has been booming, which also resulted in retirement villages being much more profitable. But now, with the slowdown in this boom and many economists predicting fall due to COVID, the near future profitability may be severely impacted. Alright, just before we wrap up, we want to mention some notable information that we couldn't fit into the video, but we think it's very important to keep in mind. MetLife Care came to an agreement with a Swedish firm, ECT, to buy all of its shares for $6 a share. However, the takeover would be implemented under a scheme arrangement and court supervised 
with shareholders voting on the transaction at a special shareholder meeting, which is expected to be held in late September. The scheme would be subject to approval from shareholders, the High Court, and the Overseas Investment Office. So this is something to look out for in the upcoming month or so. Hope this video was useful. We understand that for this video, we did not give a low to high risk conclusion, as we did with our last top video. This is because all three companies are quite similar, so we thought that the direction of the industry as a whole would be a better fit. But as always, keep recommending more and more companies, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.